Hello and welcome to the WinDriver PCI demo. By using WinDriver, you have the ability to develop a custom PCI and PCI Express driver, regardless of your silicon vendor, within minutes of work. In addition, WinDriver APIs are cross-platform compatible between various operating systems, such as Windows, Linux, Linux ARM, and Mac OS. For this demo, we will be using Windows 11. Let me show you how it's done. To begin, open the WinDriver GUI. To create a new project, click on the New Host Driver Project button. WinDriver automatically detects all plug-and-play devices attached to the machine. The first step is to select the device for the intended driver that is to be developed. Choose a name for your project. Make sure to install the INF file in order to be able to utilize the full functionality of your hardware. You might need to enter your operating system to test mode. By clicking on the Generate INF File button, it is possible to view and modify the device's information and to allow WinDriver to install the INF file automatically by checking the appropriate box at the bottom. All the hardware's resources can now be accessed to make sure it's working properly before moving on to the code generation. Note that the information is hardware specific, so it's advisable to ensure that all the device's data matches the hardware specifications. Here's how it's done. You can access the PCI configuration space from the left pane. For example, it's possible to enter a new value for the cache line register. Click on the Read Write Register button, input your data, and then click Write. As you can see, the value has changed. You can also restore the original value if needed. To access the device's input, output, and memory ranges, select a bar. Click the Read Write Memory button and set the offset and the size. Click Read and you will see the received data. It is also possible to define new registers. To add an access register to bar 0, select Add Access Register and edit the register's information. You are now able to read and write this register using the Read Write Register button. Handling interrupts is easy. Simply select an interrupt resource and edit it. First, define transfer commands that will read the interrupt status and clear it. Then use the register you created earlier and set a value for the interrupt clear command. Let's start listening to interrupts by pressing the Listen to Interrupts button. Now let's raise an interrupt and watch the transfer commands being performed. Keep in mind that before attempting to listen to level sensitive interrupts, such as PCI interrupts, you must define the hardware-specific commands for clearing the interrupt. You can also add predefined action flows in order to automate a sequence of read-write actions from the device, such as starting a DMA transfer, raising and clearing an interrupt, or any other specific functionality that you would like to have customized for your hardware. Enter the predefined action name here and click on the Add Predefined Action button. Now you can add all of the transfer commands that your predefined actions will consist of. Note that you can add a description to each transfer command. Click on the Run Flow button to execute the flow from the wizard GUI. After verifying that the device is working correctly, you can proceed to the code generation. WinDriver supports code generation for a wide range of development environments and languages. You can easily generate a skeletal code in C, C++, C Sharp, Java, and Python. We've chosen Visual Studio 2022 and generated a C code for this example. Before you click on the final generation, you can select some advanced code generation options if needed. Now you will be able to see a list of all the files created for the project. Let's take a look at the generated skeletal code. Since we created a predefined action flow, here is the generated code associated with it, which allows running it from the code itself. Note that the description we gave to each predefined action appears as a comment before the code associated with it. Finally, we will compile the code. Before running the compiled app from console mode, we must close the driver wizard. From here, we can continue communicating with the hardware. Note that the device has been identified and can be accessed using this diagnostic utility menu. The console application offers the same hardware access options as the GUI and even more functionality. So, for example, it's possible to read and write memory and input-output ranges by selecting option number 7. 
Also, running the predefined action flows is available in option 11. That's it for our demonstration. We can now close the application. The driver code that has been generated contains APIs that can be used to implement the PCI functionality. These are defined and documented in the header file and in our detailed user manual. Also, if you decide to support other operating systems, the APIs will allow you to easily port the drivers to Linux, Linux ARM, and Mac OS. From here on, you have a basic driver, which can be used as a foundation for a new application or can be integrated into an existing one. Thank you for watching. Feel free to download a fully featured trial version of WinDriver from our website. If you have any questions, please contact our sales and support team.